Yeah. That's correct. Oop. Sorry. Okay. Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? All right. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Ken. Uh, surname So. I'm a Singaporean. So today I'm going to talk about uh, process automation using an open source tool that I built um, maybe over a year ago. So let, let me segment my talk today into three parts. The first part, I'll spend a few minutes to talk about, um, uh, you'll show some photos about my open source journey, since this is about GitHub and the open source community. And the second part, I'll spend a few minutes to talk about what is process automation, specifically the branch called um, robotic process automation. And then the last part, I'll spend maybe 10 minutes or so to talk about um, the tool that I've developed and how you can use it, um, it being open source, being free, and you know, basically the technical details. Um, then maybe five minutes left just for Q&A, all right? OK. Um, so um, let me see. Why is this not showing? OK. So um, yeah, my open source journey started in 2015, so I'm, I'm like a late boomer, right? Uh, um, this was me, uh, 2015, three years ago. So at the time I was at DBS, uh, that's where I first signed up my GitHub account. I think it's January 2015. So uh, this was me at DBS, and I was developing test automation tools for manual testers, you know, kind of like replacing manual testers' job in a sense. So what I do there is to basically write program that whenever there's software releases, there's upgrades, we no longer have 10 people sitting there to test the application, um, specifically trading application. Let's say we trade the Forex, uh, US dollars, uh, Euro, and so on. We don't have to test 1,000 test cases manually one by one. So I just write code uh, basically to automate that uh, away. So, um, but at the time, I thought that it's, I, I want to do something more exciting that um, maybe I want to do process automation stuff, but not on staging system. I feel that there's a, a more challenging value in trying to do automation in production system. So I was there for one and a half years, and uh, I, I left DBS basically after I, 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 was, um, I was just selected to be the Agile team lead for the, the new Agile team, but I tendered my resignation, and then I basically packed my bags, went to Eastern Europe with my wife for uh, one and a half years, then I came back, yeah. So during that time, I was spending all my time to develop the open source software, yep. Partly it's because of interest, partly it's because I want to uh, build up my developer skills. So yeah, this was me, I was 95 kg, and uh, this is my weight chart. You know. So basically, uh, I can also talk about weight loss if you know, you want to <laughs> hear about it. Yeah. Basically, um, the last thing you want to do when digress a bit, the last thing you want to do when you want to lose weight is to avoid eating the thing that you want to lose, which is fat. So if you want to lose weight and you avoid eating fats, which is essential in life to life, your body will stop losing the fat totally. So you should not avoid eating fat if you want to lose weight. Yeah, so that's my key takeaway. Lah. Okay. Um, so the first place I went to was Serbia. This is a Nikola Tesla Museum. So Nikola Tesla made his name in the United States, but actually where he's born is from Serbia, the eastern side of Europe. So when we were there, we visited his museum. Um, let me zoom out. Uh, and this is, this is his urn, basically. So uh, I was there in Serbia for one month plus, then I moved on to, uh, this was Belgrade, then I moved on to Novi Sad. Novi Sad is a beautiful place, about 300,000 people. Uh, this is their fortress. Uh, yeah, this is the, the Novi Sad beach. It, it was summer at the time when we went. Uh, uh, then after that, we went to Budapest, and the locals will pronounce it as Budapest with a SH, although to us, we pronounce it as Budapest. Okay. Uh, this is the co-working space there. It's called uh, Impact Hub. So I was working there uh, on this open source process automation stuff, and this is a Sunday night, I think. It was maybe 11, 11 p.m. So I got to catch the last bus, and, and then I just took a photo and, before leaving. Okay, um, 
I like Hungarian food very much. Yeah, so I, I start to learn how to cook Hungarian food. They are kind of curry, uh, they are meatballs and, and stuff. All right. Uh, then this is a home cooked dinner I make for my wife. Usually, I'm the one cooking for some reason. Yeah, she doesn't really cook. Okay. Um, then some of y'all may have come across this software called Prezi. It's for making um, what you call PowerPoint slides in a web-based version. So I went to Prezi headquarters in Budapest, and they were having a talk on machine learning using H2O. Uh, now they are running the deep water version. So this is the Prezi HQ, and they are doing uh, a talk on sparkling water. But now the next phase for their product roadmap was actually deep water. Uh, this is a meetup uh, at one of the startup center. So this me. Okay. Um, so after Budapest, I came back, continued developing my code. And I can't stay in Europe for too long because Singaporeans, you can stay maximum three months and then you got to do border runs and so on. So basically, I was staying there four and a half months, five months. Then I came back. After that, I, we rest for a few months. Then we went back to uh, our next trip again. This was, we started off with Chiang Mai because it was still too cold in February 2017 when we were about to go there. This was Chiang Mai and uh, it has changed a lot. This is a tree house which I do my development every day. So every morning I wake up, you know, have breakfast, go to the cafe, this tree house cafe and do coding. And end of the day, um, then I'll meet my wife. Okay. And this are uh, the the prata they have their local version of prata. Uh, there's also time for party. This is a music festival um, in Chiang Mai. And uh, authentic Thai. Pad Thai food. Um, after that, we went back to Novi Sad again. Uh, this is the same uh, fortress as just now, but this is where the sun is uh, setting, and I think this is the moon rising and, and the night view. Um, also, attend some of the machine learning talks in Novi Sad. Yeah, so this is um, our Euro trip for a year. Okay, um, now Lee Sedo. So what got me started on to move towards automation stuff was, you know, in 2000, was it 2016? I'm, I'm not sure, or 15, I, I'm not sure. But there was this time where Lee Sedo was having matches with Alvaco, and I'm a Go player for, I think, 15 years already. Maybe my rank is 1Q around there. Um, during lunch time, I would just go off to watch the, the, this uh, live telecast, and I was like totally shocked that how can a computer beat a human player that easily? Yeah, I was basically shocked. Yeah. Uh, so after the few series of games, I basically go online to buy Lisedo's book and I shared, uh, just share a copy with my friend. Okay. Um, yeah, so let me now go to the sec uh, next part. I'll talk about, uh, so that the first part was just uh, my background. Now I'll talk about automation uh, and process automation. Um, okay, before that, so after the Europe trip, I came back last year and then I happened to meet a, a director at AI Singapore. So I was saying, oh, I've developed this uh, automation software. It has gained a considerable traction in the open source community. Um, and then I was saying, okay, since I'm going back to work, why not you, you guys, AI Singapore, just take um, whatever I develop, develop and use it in your processors and whatever. And so happened at the time, he was looking to hire engineers. So that informal meetup became the interview and I, I just got in and started working there sometime in December last year. Yeah. Okay, now um, I'll touch on a little bit about AI Singapore before I continue. Okay, basically AI Singapore is a government funded organization, it's a non-profit. We don't raise funds but um, more of a helping the Singapore ecosystem to build up local AI capabilities. So our programs that, you, if you go to our website, AI Singapore, you can see a few things under programs. There's uh, doing fundamental research, uh, doing some grand challenges, which we tackle uh, challenging problems in healthcare, 
uh, fintech and uh, urban solutions, for example. And then we have uh, 100 experiments and AI apprenticeship, where we try to tie up um, researchers from ASTAR and the various universities with some of the private sector companies to help them build AI MVPs. So if you want to know more about AI Singapore, you can just go to our website. Okay, going back to RPA, right? Okay, so okay um, for automation, if we look at the whole span of the IT industry since the 1960s, the whole entire 50 years, 60 years is actually automation itself. IT itself is automation. When you try to digitize a process, you, you are essentially automating the back end, whatever happens. For example, let's say you file a uh, income tax to IRAS. Some companies actually do the auto filing, so the, your employ uh, their employees don't have to do the filing themselves. So all these back end things that are going on is actually automation. But in the last few years, there's a rise in the new type of automation called robotic process automation. So the type of automation actually is built on legacy uh, IT systems. Instead of trying to integrate, uh, you have system A, you have system B, C, and D. Instead of trying to integrate every of the systems together through the back end, through the APIs, we actually try to integrate them through the front end. So you see the difference. The traditional IT integration, we have all API calls, we have all the REST services, and more recently, the Facebook GraphQL is picking up. But in process automation using the RPA way, the robotic process automation, we do it in a way that mimic the front end behavior of a user. For example, let's say, um, you receive an email from your boss to do something, okay? So after you read the email from your boss, you'll get the relevant information out, and then you'll, you'll log into, for example, application A to do certain steps, and after doing certain steps and getting certain results, you log into application B and do the next few steps. And after getting certain results, you log into application C, and then you do the remaining steps. So this is an example of a workflow that if you are able to map this sequence of business logic into um, some rules, actually you can automate the process and repeatedly do it many times again and again and again. So this thing is being used in uh, the market now, in mostly in banks and accounting firms because they have the skill to do large volume transactions and they have the skill to invest in automation for RPA so that they can kind of like make things more accurate at the same time they can handle a larger uh, workload with us same amount of workforce without hiring more people. So that is the background of uh, process automation. Okay, um, but there's a gap in the market now. Uh, traditional commercial process automation software costs about five to 10,000 a year per user. So that is very costly for any SME to even try to use because even you try to write the first automation script, you gotta pay you know, so much cost just to use it. But I'm not saying that those uh, commercial tools are not good, they are great, but I'm just saying that there's a gap in the SME space, uh, smaller companies which they have no access to process automation tools. So uh, in that respect, I think uh, maybe an open source version of those type of tools will make it easier for those smaller companies. So that's one of the reasons why I left DBS to just basically spend one year to develop and, and then you know, it, it got some traction on GitHub. Okay, now I will go into the tool. Okay, so if you type um, Google Tech UI, you'll see the link to the tool. Uh, it, it is spelled a Tech UI in the sense you are trying to tag the, the user uh, interface, so Tech UI. So the first result would be um, the tool. And if you type, uh, there's also a Chrome extension if you like to use a Chrome extension. So I uh, also make a Chrome extension that you can download to do your help, help you with the automation. So, okay, now I go into the introduction. So basically this is an open source tool that's free and um, it is under MIT license. Later on it will be Apache 2. So I joined AI Singapore with the goal of adding ML and AI capabilities to this tool while keeping it open source and free to use. Not just by Singapore community, but 
anywhere else in the world, you know, you can try to use it. Um, so some of the key features, I develop it with a focus on web applications because more and more, we have the traditional application thick client type of apps moving from legacy thick clients into web-based cloud uh, solutions. Um, some of the browser you can run on, Firefox, Chrome, Phantom JS. You can do visual automation, you can do OCR, you can um, automate besides websites, you can automate your desktop application, for example, Excel, uh, Microsoft Word, or your Outlook email client. And you can write your automation in 20 over human languages. Um, initially, I built this tool just to write in English, but later on, after I make the tool, I basically write an automation flow and run it to let it build itself. So um, essentially, I write a few lines of code and then I let it run and build the language uh, definition itself. How it does it is it goes to Google Translate and then one by one, it slowly get the keywords and submit to Google Translate and get the corresponding matching keyword for, let's say, Chinese, for Hindi, for Polish, uh, Hungarian and so on. And then at the end of the building process, you will be able to get all the languages um, converted for use. Yeah, but the only one, the only two languages I did manually is Chinese and English. Because the rest I'm, I'm not familiar to really manually check through. The rest are actually generated languages. And you can unzip and run on Mac, Linux and Windows. So this is a uh, slightly different from the traditional RPA software because the commercial RPA software is mostly based on Windows as the Windows Microsoft API is more supportive of back-end automation. But I try to build it based on a cross-platform um, open source way. So I support Linux, I support Mac OS, and also, of course, Windows. Um, recently, I added Python and R integration to the tool, which means that uh, right from the automation script itself, you can run Python and R code to call your machine learning libraries and get the results and basically do more complicated stuff. Yeah, um, you can you know, run by schedule and uh, advanced API calls provider, the, the typical developer stuff. Okay, I'll, I'll just uh, download and do a demo. Um, it's very easy to use. Uh, once you go to a website, you can just uh, unzip and run it. So let me see this. Uh, it may be too small. Um, okay. Okay. So let's say I want to run a, a assemble automation flow. Uh, Okay, so let's say I want to log in, I want to go to Yahoo and do a series of steps, uh, capture some screenshots and then save the result somewhere, for example. So I can just run it from command line. This way, maybe uh, using Chrome, so I can see the automation happening in, my, in front of me. Wait, let me queue it. No, okay. Yeah, so right now what you are seeing, the typing and the clicking search, getting the results and saving screenshots is actually done through the automation script. So after searching for GitHub, I capture a screenshot and then I go to a, some other, you can see the, what's happening here. So I capture the screenshots, I go to some other web page and type some other stuff over at the new web page. So all this clicking and typing is actually automated. Okay, so this will be uh, an example. And then uh, I will just jump in to show a video for some other examples. Okay, so in this example, I'll I show the using of the Chrome extension to do a, a recording of automation and then replaying it. And in this case, is to record and replay uh, account creation. So now I'm recording using the Chrome extension 
and then I, I, I go to this web page, key my username and, and the uh, password, and then save the recording. After that, I'll replay it. So after saving and exporting the recording, what you'll get is actually uh, text-based files with English-like uh, language. Click get started, click something else, you know, enter user email, enter password, blah, blah, blah. So after running through uh, exporting the text file, you can just do your edits, like maybe I want to wait for a few more seconds to capture the results and, and show the results. And then you can just run it after that. So imagine doing this by sending an Excel spreadsheet to this application. You can actually, instead of registering 500 accounts, you can just use an Excel spreadsheet to key in the accounts you want to create and then pump it to the application, to this tool, and let it automate the creation process. Okay, so, all right. Um, I have a few more minutes. I will show uh, another video. Maybe this one. Okay, um, and I will jump straight into the, the example. Um, so let's say this. Okay, now I'll show an example of uh, automation of downloading. Um, let's say you have a survey, you want to automate downloading of the survey results. So this will be an example. So whatever you are seeing now that, uh, that's happening in the front end is actually uh, automation script including typing of the uh, passwords and so on, and the user ID, the logins. And then after logging in, you do certain things and you, know, you download the CSV file to your desktop and then you use it for the next step of the workflow process. So all these things can be stacked up to form a more complicated workflows, but this is just a very, very short workflow to show an example of what it can be done. Yeah. Okay, um, I think I got two minutes left. So, any questions from the floor? Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. So, do we have any questions here? Can't see again. It's all right. No? Okay, cool. So, thank you very much, Ken. Right. So, thank you very much. Right.